here we are nice saturday morning out here at the sawmill gonna take one of the blades that i've sharpened back with my grindlux 4000 that new tool i've got for sharpening my sawmill blades gonna try out and see whether those sawmill blades actually are what they claim to be after they're sharpened near perfect so i got a sawmill blade behind me in addition to a whole bunch of other stuff brought a level out just to check my mill but I brought one of my blades with me and uh, this thing has been set using my Woodland Mills tooth setter. As I mentioned, I've also sharpened it. Got the whole tooth profile ground down perfectly, at least in my opinion. One thing with this blade, however, it is missing a few teeth. This, this blade was originally going to be garbage and you guys saw that big pile of, uh, pile of sawmill blades that I had planned on throwing out and just buying new. Well, I did a bit of thinking and I decided I would grind it down and hopefully put a bit more miles on it before I throw it out. So this is missing, I think, two or three teeth. We're going to see if that has a big impact on cutting logs or not and whether a blade like this should be thrown out or whether you can revive it and bring it back to life. So that's what I'm up against today. As you can see behind you, I don't know if you guys can hear or see those bugs, but uh, unfortunately here in central Ontario, it is now bug season. So you guys are going to see me putting on some Canadian aftershave quite a bit, uh, bug spray. And besides that, we'll make the best of it. Happy Saturday. Let's go. Nothing like washing yourself with a, uh, well, basically a DEET soaked uh, bug repellent uh, wipe. Makes you feel alive or maybe closer to death, one of the two. Ugh. <coughs> oh, that's some nasty stuff. Oh my, this is bad. Okay, I think we're ready to do some work. Not feeling that great anymore, I don't think. Oh well, here we go. Let's give the band wheels a little touch up, get some of this debris off. And look at it all caked on the drive, on the drive side here. We'll get that off as well and you can take the uh, spark plug cap off here if you want it I can tell you I'm probably not gonna fire it up so there's no blade on it anyways but to be safe do as they say not as they do take the take the distributor cap or uh, what do you call it spark plug cap off then you won't bump start the engine Get in there. I don't know what you guys do out there. I don't know if you even do this or if this is overkill. I always, in the back of my head, think if I'm putting on a new blade or new newish blade, I should probably give it a good, good start by keeping things clean. Yeah, that's probably good enough. That all looks pretty good. that out of there while we're here right you can see oh, I think that's good enough let's get the new blade on okay well here's the blade that I uh, brought back to life and as I mentioned I thought I had two teeth that were broken you can see them right where my fingers are but in fact I have two there just two in a row and then a bit further down I've got thought I just saw it a bit further down I've got 
two more right there so the full tooth is not gone well the most important part of it is actually the uh the sharp part so we've got two teeth probably about three feet apart for a total of four feet that are four teeth that are missing and so we're going to try it and see what happens worst come to worst well let's not talk about that And obviously the the band wheel on this side is fully tensioned or fully uh, untensioned and as a result you can manipulate it okay let's get her in the ballpark so i'm feeling for flushness at the back of the cast iron band wheel with the back of the blade once i feel it's relatively flush then i know i'm at least close not that it's going to be perfect right off the start but when it's close, then I'll come up and I'll put a touch of tension on this. And you'll notice, see this thing straightening out? See it coming from like a crook there? It's gonna straighten out. We're not torquing on her, we're just putting a little bit. Then we'll double check and make sure it's close again. I definitely don't like to tension it if it's nowhere near close, because you start tensioning it and then it just pops off. Okay. Let's go check this side. That side's actually quite good. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. We're in the blade guides. So we're probably in good shape here. So I'm going to tension this up. And let's grab the torque wrench. Make sure it's on 25. 25, yes sir. 25 foot-pounds. Just going to leave that shut while I torque it. I barely had any foot pounds on it, so I probably got to go quite a ways here. Oh, guess we got her there. Just to be safe here, I'm going to grab my gloves. The old 18 hole gloves. Actually, these might be nine holes. One, two, oh yeah. These are the nine holes. These are my good pair. Sooner or later, I'll just grab the electrical tape and then we'll be back down to a, maybe a one or a two hole. Gee, the back of the hand too is a little shabby. Anyways, let's, uh, let's do a revolution here. And I'm going to do one revolution. As I said, to be safe, you might want to take the uh, spark, part, uh, spark plug cap off. Do a revolution. I'm going to watch the blade to make sure it's not creeping forward or backwards. Because if you keep going, then it'll fly off. And just going a little bit, whoa, right there. I'm going to stop right there. And the reason is, you guys may or may not be able to see this, but see that blade right there? See how far forward it's crept? If I take my hand, I'm now starting to come forward. And so if I were to keep going, boom, that's coming off. So that tells me the blade's got to go backwards. And so my little handy dandy chart here, clockwise moves rearward. I turn that clockwise, obviously it moves backwards. Now. Take one full revolution of tension off. There's half, there's another half that's one full revolution. And now I can adjust this guy. And you would have seen me do this many times over. If you've seen my other videos, you gotta do this oops, every time you put on a new blade. Okay, clockwise moves rearward. I gotta think here for a minute. Uh, clockwise, okay. So I'm gonna do about a quarter of a turn, maybe even less. Yeah, we'll do a, do a good quarter there. Snug that back up. Okay, now I'm actually going to take the tension off even more here because I want to put the blade back where it should go. And in order to do so, I need to feel things. So if you guys sneak down here, you guys see that? Look how far forward that thing was. It's coming for me. So let's push her back where it should go, flush with the back of the band wheel. That feels pretty pretty good there. Same thing over here, and this one actually didn't move, so that one's good to go. And 
you actually get pretty good at this including misplacing your tools you get pretty good at uh, adjusting that blade because you got to do it every time you put on a different blade at least you should if you want to keep your blades on and we'll torque her back to 25 foot pounds wait for the sweet spot bingo okay do the same thing again i'm putting gloves on not that these look like they're gonna do a lot well okay and it's creeping forward again i did one quarter of a turn and i'm noticing right here it's creeping forward again and so every blade's different you will have to uh you will have to adjust accordingly so take the tension off all right clockwise moves rearward <clears throat> let's go clockwise another quarter it's probably a good quarter loosen it off a touch come on back around slide the blade back to where it goes and if you can't push it back with your fingers easily don't uh don't force it because you're going to slip and cut your finger so take a bit more tension off make sure that one's still good that one's still good and you guys know the drill i'm just going to repeat here and hope or at least in the ballpark throw in the old nine holes all right we're getting closer we're not there yet so i gotta make some more adjustments so uh, i'm gonna cut this because you guys don't want to watch me do this over and over again but this is the routine all right we're good to go i just had one small adjustment i had to make in that uh, blade tracking and i think we're good so cold start here we go The engine uh, fires up quite easily most of the time. I'd say 99% of the time. I start it with choke, no matter the temperature out. Usually if it's winter time and it's real cold, I probably have to pull it maybe two or three times. Except that one video you guys saw, but that was probably my fault for flooding it. Anyways, two or three pulls in the winter time. In the summer, as you saw, that was the second pull. With the choke to start, then you shut her off and she's good. So, let's let her warm up and uh, load a log. You guys are here to see if this thing will cut. I sure hope it does. Otherwise, I just fully dressed, sharpened a new blade, or uh, old blade rather, for nothing. Can you guys see that? See how my mill's creeping on me? Well, that's gonna be another video. My bed is a little bit out of uh, flatness or level, and uh, we gotta fix that. Stay, stay boy. No dice. Hey boy! Oh yeah, look at that. Custom. Okay. Let's try to get this on without rolling on me. I think I can lift this one. And these are old logs, hence why the bark's coming off. You're gonna get some staining from insects in there, but uh, we don't waste anything around here, so we're cutting her anyways. Sure, my brush got to. I'm just losing it today. Can't find anything. Hopefully, that's not a sign. I don't think there's any dirt on there anyways these are all cut in the winter and they haven't touched the ground since okay what are we getting out of this my approximation uh four by four uh i think so first cut let's see 
put on the old earmuffs so when this thing blows i'm just kidding where'd my earmuffs go oh they're on my head here we go oh, the old uh wood stop Maybe we'll take her down a touch. tell you that thing cut real well if we have a look here you don't see too much difference between this and a brand new blade you know you get the odd little line there but I tend to get that no matter what um, no matter whether I'm using a brand new blade or one that's been resharpened so so far so good I'm quite happy with that so we will uh, we'll take just a little bit more off that side We'll take just a bit more off that side and we'll flip her over. guys there it is there's the end result you guys have a little look there it's really nice and smooth to me this is pretty much equivalent to what you're going to get with a brand new blade at least in my experience now this is red pine this is very dry at least compared to if you were to cut a fresh tree but this goes to show you that you might as well just try to revive your blade sharpen them up even if you're missing a tooth or two and in my case four well guys there you have it don't necessarily throw out your old blades right away especially if you have access to a sharpener even if someone at a professional level doesn't want to sharpen those old blades, if you can do it yourself, well, you're probably going to be able to get a few more board feet out of it before they hit the scrap pile. As you can tell behind me, I got a whole bunch more work to do. I've got logs over here, I've got logs up the hill, and I've got offcuts over there. I got to do something with all this stuff. Eventually, I'd like to, you know, maybe build some sort of a nice uh, setup here for the sawmill. This for right now is good. I've got a whole bunch of other projects on the go, and so... This hopefully will get done. I just don't know when. Anyways, appreciate all you guys being here. I got one other job I just found out about that I got to do. I got to level this mill. So come on back next time. I'll be doing that. And hopefully before long, I'll be tackling some more of these logs or that pile or maybe even this shelter. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.